This video has been brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com backslash mega capital G. Over 180,000 titles to choose from on your Apple or Android device. Cancel any time with no obligations. I'm listening to The Amazing Wrestling for My Life by Shawn Michaels. Link in the description. What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Got an excellent duel for you guys to check out. 2015 was a phenomenal year for Yu Gi Oh, wasn't it? We had so many good things going on. A lot of people like to uh, call it Duelist Alliance format, which I still personally believe Duelist Alliance is the greatest Yu Gi Oh set of all time. And even after that, into the Secret Forces, where we also got Ritual Beasts and Necros and Yosinji, which were <laughs> all absolutely fantastic. We had so much in the meta that was just great. Necros and Shadow, Satella Knights and Khalif Fort. Man, it was just, you know, all the dual terminal decks. They were all fantastic. Burning Abyss as a TCG exclusive. You guys are going to be watching a duel between two of those archetypes. So we have Necros, which obviously... People are very excited to play Necroz again. Still, not in my personal opinion. I don't like to call it full power Necroz because to me, full power Necroz still means that you get to play Jin, which, I mean, that card's banned in the OCG and the TCG, but it's pretty damn like it's as close as you're going to get, uh, in my opinion. But you also got Burning Abyss, which, I, you know, they got a lot of support. I would personally, even as a, someone who's not a Burning Abyss fan, I would like to see Seer or Graph, probably Seer go to like three. I think that would definitely help. Burning Abyss is grind game maybe keep graph at one but uh you know i digress anyways this is going to be a duel with a lot of moving parts and a lot of back and forth and i think it's going to be the only duel that i have in this video so you guys are going to see the necros of unicorn i had argued for a long time that necros could not be fully competitive until they got this card at three because i, I feel like this this card just controlling it is essentially like a win condition i mean locking out your opponent's extra deck well not locking it out but negating it it's just so powerful man anytime they try to throw something on the board just negate that stuff anyways he's going to go for the valkyris you know getting a defensive card not bad he is going to use dinomiscus this takes away immediately his potential of using trishula because his opponent no longer has a hand and he's going to get rid of that necroz of Brionic, which i mean or uh, unicorn which was not bad he's going to summon Brionic. i I never really like seeing this thing summoned unless the opponent has some extra deck monsters, but it's fine because he actually got the Ben 10 search. He's going to search Vanity's Ruler, which cannot be normal summon this turn because he actually already used his normal summon. Anyways, during the end phase, going to get his Trap Trick search, and he's also going to get his Paleozoic Dynamiscus, and he'll get a Skarm. So he's actually going to recover a lot of his resources here. He's playing Ixie Revive Splash, which I've never seen in Burning Abyss, but <laughs> to each its own. We're going to get that tour guide normal summon, and then he's going to go for Farfa, which, uh, yeah, was an interesting play. He's going to use Karma Cut, get the second Dino Miscus. Could we be seeing a totally awesome summon and burning abyss? Now, that would be spicy. He's going to try to get some attacks through, but he did search Valk last turn. I would have taken the damage, honestly. I'm not close to uh, dying. He does summon a totally awesome. This is what I, I didn't like this play here. I feel like if you have TA on field and your opponent uses a pot of extravagance, I think you got to negate it. I'm just, I will never be a fan of letting my opponent freely draw cards as long as I have negation. Unless they have evenly match and pretty much evenly match alone, I'm negating that, man. I'm not letting you get two cards for, for nothing because when you have a, a hand of six cards, you basically have the world you know, on, on your, your shoulder, or you have the, you, what's the word? What's the, the, the saying I'm going for the, uh, the world is your oyster or something like that. You have too many resources to have a bad hand and to be in a bad position. I would say anyways, he is going to search on another unicorn. This time he's going for net this to pop the totally awesome. No good water target, so he's just going to return it. That's unfortunate because uh, usually you want to get some advantage out of it. He did go for the seer from the Dante, and now it looks like he's in a bad position because Vanity's Ruler is a win condition against a lot of decks. And, uh, you know, the Necros player can still special summon. He's going to go Fin Griefing, and this is interesting. He's going to go for Farfa, so he does have some outs to it. <laughs> Here comes that Xe Revive Splash, which is... <laughs> troll in this deck and now he's gonna activate seer and also he's gonna activate dante to get the seer back and i didn't quite understand the ip mask arena play here i was like well what does it do if you can't use the effect because vanity vanity's ruler is on field maybe he just doesn't have anything better anyway she's just going to die immediately because he can't special summon but he at least says dante 
sitting on the field in defense mode that can at least kind of chill he did top deck an incantation i believe this uh the pen needs a ritual monster so he may not be able to use it yeah well he can use it now because he uh, got the um, copy of brionic and he might be able to get around dante you know trishula definitely is an option and he's searching out the trishula so he got his uh his his option quick enough now trishula will be met with effect veiler of course because why not use the effect veiler right there if you have the opportunity he got man i really thought he was going to attacking the dante maybe he's smelling the evenly match despite this is not an evenly match however in the battle phase if he did declare an attack he could use fin grief and then evenly match him so i don't know if he was playing around evenly match for some reason but he actually got kind of lucky he didn't attack there he would have been screwed by it really really hard he got a second evenly match here and he's going to go for Alec committing to the board. I don't think he has to commit. I think he just has to wait for his Dante to get ran over and then evenly match him. Uh, that's probably what I would have gone for. Anyways, uh, Beatrice is going to attack and then Beatrice is going to activate. Going to summon Jericho Dante and then Dante is going to attack. See, now, I mean, I guess his evenly matches are still online, but I feel like he could get trished here. Uh, Jericho Dante is going to be negated by the effect of Dark Ruler No More. And he's actually going to use the effect of Valk to draw some cards. See, now the necros player has decommitted from the field and evenly match isn't so effective anymore i feel like he could have just used evenly match when he had the chance now if he uses evenly match he's just not going to get much value out of it he's going to pitch to seer at least to you know get it out of his hand so it can't be trished and then he will be able to activate the effect getting a scar he will use his only evenly match because he lost the other one to the other trish and he will get a tour guide search during the end phase but i don't love his position uh you know the effect failer could be potentially good we'll have to see he got the seer from or the graph from his deck and so many turns and he's finally getting around to that graph this was impressive he uses the uh the the back jack and he's actually going to get uh i think a karma cut off of the effect so oh no i guess he didn't use it yet but he is gonna get a karma cut later spoilers <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Goes into Hall of Firebrax, then for, neck, for Nightmare uh, Unicorn. And then he is going to summon Dante back. And he's actually going to go for uh, Access Code Talker, which I didn't even know Burning Abyss played. But, uh, you know, more power to him. Gets a mess of attack. Gets this here back from his uh, graveyard to his hand. And uh, then, oh, maybe he doesn't use... I could have swore he used Backjack in this duel. I guess I'm just trolling. His, he is going to use it right there. Yeah, okay, there it is. Backjack's going to give him that copy of Karma Cut, which was like, that was a saving grace because he got a free defensive card um, just off the effect. Who doesn't like that? Now, his opponent, seeing that he does have a hand, is going to go for Trishula once again. I would just go ahead. I would use the Karma Cut. I would pitch the Seer so that, you know, I at least... Because you don't want to, like, not use the Karma Karma cut then end up losing the karma cut and then be in a bad position but uh he's gonna use it he's gonna get dinomiscus at the same time and pitch to seer he is going to lose a monster from his hand but it's perfectly fine because he got the win condition you hate to see a duel end like this but it's going to he summons the barbar off of the seer which means it's immediately going to be destroyed by well its own effect because he has dynamiscus on field and then he's going to use it to burn his opponent for a game what is this the 2015 uh nawcq finals because i'm pretty sure that's how noah green ended up winning the finals he won by like barbar <laughs> it's kind of troll but it is what it is anyways we'll pause for one quick second and we'll check out those okay so this is what the necroz bill looks like on paper interesting only two copies of unicorn i mean i guess it is kind of like a matchup dependent card you know back when uh necroz was largely at full power or close to that the only thing in the game that didn't really use the extra deck was like yo Sinju. that was the only deck essentially that wasn't destroyed by necroz of unicorn but now you do have you got other cards or excuse me you have other decks and archetypes like el dorado and other ones that don't really use the extra deck i love seeing pot of extravagance i see i sometimes see necroz builds that don't run this card and uh, you know i know that you don't want to banish all your copies of Nethys and your head of the arc light but outside of those two cards like what really even matters in your extra deck for uh necroz unless you're running um you know like the the mega zaborg build which they need the extra deck a little more with uh some of the other cards anyways um this build is pretty it's pretty good pretty legitimate uh the burning abyss build 
uh, is a much more trap heavy build of Burning Abyss that, than I'm personally used to. But you see that this build is more focused on grinding. When you look at Burning Abyss and like the Block Dragon BA deck, it's all completely reliant on the first turn and, you know, setting up a board with a bunch of negations. This deck isn't like that at all. It has some board breakers in here, like evenly matched. You got some, uh, you know, some effect negation or some hand trap action going on with the effect failure. And then you got, you know, a whole lot of utility uh, traps and including the ability to even go into totally awesome i wish there was another water monster to possibly bring back but you know can't have everything in here always nice to see trap trick and just these interesting burning abyss builds that do run a lot of traps anyways if you guys are interested in the deck stuff so they'll they will of course be in the description below thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already and turn on that notification bell for daily videos